12.30 on a Tuesday on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio, or for that matter, Jet Broadcasting live or you could watch this live and archived on Facebook, uh, our 1420 WEMB Sports Radio Facebook page. It means only one thing, Asian House Vols Talk with Caleb Calhoun of All for Tennessee. I've always said that allfortennessee.com is the best off-season website for the Tennessee Volunteers. Now it's showing its medal as an in-season website as football season is just about to get underway. And there are certain things, uh, certainly, uh, that uh, Caleb Calhoun can give us insight on that I don't think anybody else covering the Tennessee Volunteers uh, could have. But I want to just ask this straight off the bat. Bryce Thompson, should he be cut? Should he still be suspended indefinitely after a domestic dispute where among other things, he, uh, in a moment of rage, said, uh, threatened to shoot, what was it, shoot the campus up, or shoot the dorm up, or whatever it was. That's not a good look these days, folks, even if you are angry. Uh, I'll ask you, should Bryce Thompson still be a Tennessee volunteer? So, and, and at the risk of sounding Homer media, I will say that I, I, I do, I apply this standard pretty much across the board for college sports, which is, I, I, I kind of do take the Nick Saban approach where he talks about where do you want him to be, but I, I, I stop short when it comes to physical violence. So I don't know how you handle a threat of violence, because, you know, I've, I've always said something like me, I, I mean, I barely even think it's been a tourist, honestly, but mm-hmm. something like physical violence, you kick him off. My position at this point is, assuming everything is true, and I, have, I mean, let's be honest, the witnesses are way more credible than Bryce Thompson at this point. <laughs> um... And, and so I'm going to assume that everything that happened is true. I think he should be suspended for the year. And I think he should take mandated anger management courses. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think maybe even pull his scholarship for a year and get it, give him a chance to get back on the team. I've never been on the bandwagon of kicking people off teams unless, again, there was – my, my position is the only thing that should get players kicked off teams is if they do something that we believe should warrant prison time for them. And I, I don't think anybody okay. thinks that what Bryce Thompson has been accused of doing warrants at prison time. So it, that's always in my position. It is okay. misdemeanor. D- domestic assault. We'll give you that. It is the misdemeanor and all this. Uh, I mean, I take a stronger marijuana stance than you do. Uh, you know, we can discuss that another time or so. I just do. I mean, I realize, you know, and uh, so people have different opinions on certain things, but I do understand where you're going with that. Certainly that's not, you know, going around stabbing nuns. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess, is there any hope we can withstand what with the uh, the girlfriend finding in Bryce Thompson? Thompson's dorm, the fi- the false eyelashes that weren't hers. Is there any hope that we can have that Bryce Thompson is, I don't know, a closet transvestite or something like that? I mean, that that in today's day and age, that would be acceptable. I'm just curious if you thought that, Caleb Calhoun. Well, you know, <laughs> there were, with the, it was funny because I was thinking about this and I was joking about this last night. I'm like, you know, we talk about how, like, there is this belief for Ten- among Tennessee fans that everything breaks wrong for them right as the season starts. And this year, that seemed more validated than in past years. And it's true, like, how, you know, their top sophomore player, their top starter, gets suspended from something that stems from fake eyelashes. What are the chances <laughs> of that? And so, given, given that fact, you might have a point. Maybe he, you know, and hey, maybe that's a great, maybe he could become like, I don't know, a spokesperson for the community and there you go. he's comfortable with and, and you know, it become you know, becomes a national star. Bryce Thompson <laughs> meets divine. What do you think? Bryce Thompson meets divine. You got a chance at that? <laughs> no, they're my <laughs> I mean, this really does sound like, I mean, those old stories I used to hear about baseball where, you know, Satchel Paige uh, calls Buck O'Neill Nancy to cover up, you know, his own, uh, in you know, philandering or uh, the, the famous story about Kirby Higby, who gets a uh, love letter from his mistress and uh, his wife confronts him and he actually has the audacity to say, it must have been another Kirby Higby. 
as you know, I mean, that's like John yeah. Smith in the phone book, you know, and all that. I guess we don't have phone books anymore, but, you know, any... I, I do, though, one... I, I mean, I... say that, by the way. Hmm. Yes? I, I do... I, I just think it's warranted as, as, as members of all media to come out, and I, I gotta defend Blake Topmeyer because I've seen way too many attacks on him for asking what I thought was a perfectly legitimate question yesterday um, to Jeremy Pruitt when he asked if Pruitt's all by thumbs was a danger to campus, and Ball Twitter raked him through the coals for that. Of course they did, but you know, lots of all nation is not working. You know, I have my position on Bryce Thompson. What the Vol Nation is not looking good with how they've responded to this incident because they would not be responding to this incident if it were a Florida player who did this. Uh, you're correct they there, did. and I am totally in agreement with you on Blake Topmeyer. Absolutely, and I think it's disturbing that the fan base would take a, uh, anyone in the fan base would take the idea of uh, having a problem with him a asking that question. I mean, look, I'm big on ask any question. Now, it may come back to bite you. I mean, the famous Mike North asking uh, Pat Riley, would you shave your head for a victory? I mean, yeah, I know. That's, uh, but actually, as time has gone by, uh, Mike North has come out ahead on that. So, you know, say what you will. But anyway, uh, but no, I totally agree with you. It's time, you know, there are too, far too many people in East Tennessee covering sports that view themselves as extension of the PR department and not as journalists. So, yeah, I'm five stars behind uh, Blake Topmeyer right there. Yeah, I sound like Butch Jones, huh? Five stars behind Blake Topmeyer, huh? I want to do ask you about Kasim Hill transferring in. He won't be uh, playing quarterback for the Vols this year, but uh, didn't have a chance to talk to you about it last week. Tell me, uh, what do you know about Kasim Hill? And what I'm a little bit concerned about is if he's coming in, what does this say about the Brian Mowers and the JT Shrouts that we thought might be the backup quarterback for next year or the starting quarterback come, oh, 2021? Uh, your thoughts on Hill transferring to Tennessee? Well, from Tennessee's perspective, I actually don't think it does much only because they get him at a walk-on as a walk-on so they don't actually have to use a, one of the limited scholarships that I mean look if you're gonna if you're a coach and you got a chance to add a four-star four-style quarterback to your offense um and not have to take up a scholarship I mean you take that I mean it's and, and so I don't think it's just too much about that I will say having being a Turk fan myself having graduated from Maryland and having watched this team for the last couple of years a lot of people point to how he struggled last year but that wasn't so much his fault. Um, it actually wasn't even Matt Canada's fault. Now, Kasim Hill was not a fit for the system Canada put in last year, but the only reason Canada put in that system was because there wasn't, you know, the offensive line wasn't good enough. There were just so many other, in, 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 there were so many other ingrained issues with the Turks offensively that the only thing really Canada could do was have an offense completely dedicated to misdirection. And so they barely threw the ball. And Kadeem Hill is more of a pro-style drop-back passer. Um, one of the things that I think stands out the most about this is that a lot of people are talking about is that Kadeem Hill went to St. John's College in D.C., which is where Mordecai McDaniel, who also committed to Tennessee last week, is from. And that's also where five-star receiver Rakeem Jarrett, who is the top balls prospect for next year, is playing right now. So... You, you know, they got two St. John's players on their team now. You wonder if that'll have an impact in them getting Rakeem Jarrett, because that's been the guy that everybody's been talking about hmm. for 2020. So, something, so I think that's the biggest takeaway of it. Something to look at for recruiting. There you go. There's quite the insight. That's why we have Caleb Calhoun on from allfortennessee.com. By the way, speaking of uh, Maryland, this uh, I know this is for the Hokies fans out there. Got to ask you, Josh Jackson is now going to be the Terps starting quarterback. Remember, uh, you know, he was at uh, Virginia Tech for a year, decided to transfer away. Uh, thoughts on Josh Jackson becoming the Terps quarterback? I, uh, I, I, I've always liked Tyrell Tigrone, but the fact of the matter is that he was Maryland's quarterback to, uh, before Kasim Hill, and then he got hurt, but he just can't throw the ball. He just literally can't, and Josh Jackson does at least bring more of a dual threat. Mm -hmm. He can run the spread better. The reason Kasim Hill transferred out, I mean, he is, again, he, I, I, I like Kasim Hill. He's a pro-style quarterback, never should have committed to Maryland when it was an offense built around the spread. He is much of a better, he's a much better fit for Jim Chaney's offense. Interesting. Um, and so I think Josh Jackson is actually the perfect fit for Lockheed Spread. So we'll see what happens there. 
All right, so we got there. I want to take a break here coming up, but when you come back, I got to talk to you about this depth chart that doesn't say a whole heck of a lot. And of course, your articles, uh, you don't think that the Florida victory uh, should excite Tennessee fans, uh, even if they were a little bit sluggish. I agree with you there. And some players you think might step up for the Tennessee Volunteers in the 2019 season. It's Asian House Vols Talk with Caleb Calhoun of AllForTennessee.com on 1420 WEMB Sports Radio and JetBroadcasting.live. Back after this.